Welcome back to Good Morning Law Land. It's Transformation Tuesday and no better way than transforming in recovery. We have Wesley Gear in the house, a dear friend of ours who has Rock to Recovery, the, the platform, the radio show. He is rocking to recovery. Yes. That's, that's very true. Mm -hmm. I definitely am. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. I love you people. We love, we love you. Too. I love you all. so love much. Yeah. So, Wes and I went for a very transformational experience. Mm. We went to this incredible sound bath. Sound bath. And oh. it's very true to brand. The music was so healing. And mm. that's what you're doing with Rock to Recovery, right? So tell everybody a little bit about it. Right. So I, I went to a treatment program, a rehab, if you will. And there wasn't music there. We were drawing pictures, yoga, um, and guys were farting during yoga, not taking it serious. I was very mad about that because I wanted to yoga. Yeah. But uh, there wasn't music. But I had my guitar, right? And uh, in our breaks between classes or whatever, I would play guitar. And I noticed this clicky milieu, 22 guys. You know, you like him. He's weird. I don't Because you're new. You're raw. It brought us all together. So that stuck with me. Like, why are we drawing pictures? But there's no music. So I, I got sober. I got the gig with Korn because I was sober. And then um, when the original guy was coming back to Corn, Brian Welch, I was like, what am I going to do now? And so it was back to that thing we're talking about, prayer and meditation. I'm like, I'm kind of screwed. I'm an out-of-work musician in my 40s, and I'm sober. This, this could be a point. <laughs> this could be, <laughs> you could get really into self-pity, especially if you're somebody who's new to uh, sobriety. It's easy to go, oh, I'm different, you know? So I was like, okay, there's been plenty of guitarists in the world. What's my legacy going to be? And then I started thinking about, well, maybe I could create something that will help people even after I'm gone. Mm. And so I was like thinking, well, there's no music in treatment when I was there. So there's maybe a need. And so I created this new version of music therapy that came to me um, like a bolt of lightning, you know. Um, and the idea is to get non-musicians to access the healing, uplifting power of playing music. Mm. So I could take these 10 or 12 people right here at the end of an hour, we'll all be singing and playing. And, and these could be people who have never played an instrument before. Typically is. I love that. You always have some little hidden gems, uh, but most people will say, no, nah, no, nah, you don't want me singing. No way. I'm not musical. And to which we'll say, well, if you were three years old and I put on music, what would you do? Well, I'd start dancing around. Aha. I got you, didn't I? <laughs> so you are musical. Do you like music? Well, yeah, I listen to it all the time. So it's a language that you understand. You just haven't spent a lot of time accessing it. That's where me and my staff come in. Um, so somehow I got lucky enough to create right. this concept. So I, yeah. I want to talk about something because I know obviously we want to talk about your event. We want to talk about the platform. But I think it's interesting because the one thing about being sober or and I'm not sober, I'm not an alcoholic, but I choose to not drink majority of all the time because I it's challenging. Like it challenges me to get hobbies and to do things because if you just default to alcohol yeah you know then it's just like it's a it just takes away all boredom it takes away all those yeah. things so talk to us about somebody who either needs to get sober or someone who you know is considering not always having their life around alcohol what is it like to be sober and what's the lifestyle because this is really what your brand's about it's about a lifestyle that comes with you know yeah. not mm -hmm. having insanity in your life basically yeah yeah, well, for a guy like me, like you're saying, I couldn't stop. It got to a point where even when the record labels were coming, even with the biggest show of my life where you think one night you'll take it easy. Nope, I get arrested. Like, it was bad. Um, yeah, but what we talk about is the vortex of radness. For many struggling to give it up, like, I can't imagine a life without wine or Adderall or heroin, whatever it is. You realize that your, your life, well, it, it's, a, it's kind of a contradiction because you feel like your life's going to get smaller without it but it gets much bigger. All of a sudden you rediscover surfing or getting into yoga, which I didn't do until I was sober or I became a runner or created a nonprofit. Right. What? When I stopped doing speed, I created a nonprofit and I started <laughs> helping people? No way. <laughs> and so, the world when you slowed down. Right. And so in drinking, I found that, and using, I found that I was out for myself all the time. I'm looking outside of myself to make myself feel better. I need you, I need cars, I need money, I need clothes, I need adoration, I need women. And it, it's, a, it's an endless void. Right. And what you find is when you start helping other people, like when you have a mission, like what you guys are doing, bringing love and light, you walk away, you go, I really wasn't into helping that guy out, but gosh, I feel good afterwards. Which is the opposite of, I wanna get drunk, and now afterwards I feel like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Horrible. Such a it, great yeah. point. It is such a great point. And, you know, it reminds me because when I, when I um, first started my sort of journey, um, 
part of the invitation was to become more selfish about my life because I realized I was, I was sort of giving sure. it away, but giving it away from a place of like, it's something I should be doing for, and I should be doing for other people. But I realized that over time, when I started doing things for other people and sharing of myself more generously, I was the one who benefited no matter right. what, and I benefited yeah. first, Yeah. right? Yeah. So talk about that piece a little bit, because I think that can be um, something that people don't realize, that it's something that feels good for you, Wes. Like, you love doing it because it's good for you. It also happens to be good for other people. Yeah, and it feels counterintuitive. Yeah. So for a guy like me coming in to get sober, I'm like, my life's a mess. I, you know, have debt. My car was repoed. Nobody wants to talk to me, right? How can help somebody, helping somebody else help me? Well, it builds self-esteem. Right. And usually here's what I know is when people are having a bad day, they're not going, oh, my gosh, the long term implications of this tax plan are really going to destroy. This <laughs> they're not thinking about totally. that. You're thinking about yourself. Totally. I'm ugly. I'm fat. I don't have this. I need that. I want this. You know what I mean? It's just self-centered fear or just right unfulfillment. But I get the biggest fulfillment from in here. And so when I come over and help Rob out and go, man, I love you. What do you need from me, homie? Yeah. I walk out and I get that f fulfillment from inside. So love what do you that. do on a Friday night if it's not, you know, you're not having an actual concert, which you are having this Saturday. <laughs> but what does it look like? You know, what do you do instead of going to a bar? What do you do instead of, you know, what is someone out there going, what the hell would I do if I'm not drinking? <laughs> it's true. Yeah, well, you know, I'm a workaholic, so I'm so <laughs> into too. what I do. <laughs> I, thank you. I mean, I love my career is my passion, right. is my joy. I love creating. I love helping other people. So I'm a morning person. That's where I get, that's my party time. It's like the coffee and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into it. That's my favorite part of the day. Don't bother me. Um, but at night, you know, there's, you don't have to get drunk to ha have a good time. You know, I sponsored a guy and he goes, I just want to be normal. Well, what's normal? You know, go get hammered on the weekend. I'm like, dude, <laughs> that isn't really normal. So, you know, we do fun things like sound bath meditations in an ancient yeah. church with sounds cascading or, you know what I mean? And eating really good pizza. Yeah. And there's so many options, including your event on Saturday. So tell yeah. us what's happening. So Rock Recovery is a music therapy company. It's been adapted by a uh, hundred treatment programs. We have a we have a contract with the Department of Defense, which is so cool that they've, you know, accepted it as a as a great form of therapy for That's wounded so warriors. Bad. We get flown around the country working with them. We have a nonprofit. We take it to state funded and and nonprofit orgs like Claire Foundation over there. Um, so we have a fundraiser um, this way. It gives my guys I can give them more work. Um, and we can give away what we do for free to people who would, or, or programs that would never afford something like what we do, right? They don't have the funding for it. So this concert is kind of twofold. We first honor uh, a sober musician of sorts or an icon, right? Showing that you can be an artist, a DJ. So we're, this year we honored Mike Ness from Social Distortion. We honored Corey Taylor from Slipknot and Stone Sour. Uh, this year we're honoring Moby, right? He's sober, he's super rad, and he'll take the award and kind of share like, hey, y'all, my life is amazing and I'm not loaded. It's a sober event because I wanted to give back to the recovery community, mm -hmm. right? Um, showing that you can have an amazing time. In the past, we've had Guns N' Roses guys and Stone Temple Pilots and Billy Idol's band guys play, and it's a sober environment with celebs on the, on the red carpet. Right. So this year, same thing. Um, we're also honoring my friend Tommy Vex. Uh, do I have a second to tell his story? Yeah. 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 All right. So Tommy Vex is a homie. He struggled bad like many of us musicians. He makes this new band. They're going to remake the song Zombie by uh, Cranberries, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah. yeah. They send it to Dolores O'Riordan just to see. She goes, I love it. I want to sing on it. She ODs oh. the day oh. she's supposed to go in the studio and sing with him. They're like, what do we do? Do we even release it now? They did a little soul searching and decided we're going to put it out and get in chills right now mm -hmm. and donate um, proceeds to her children. They, wow. He gave her children a check for, I'm still getting chills, yeah. for a quarter of a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And this dude's a sober dude. And just another, it gets me choked up. Yeah. It's another testament that like he went from too much cocaine and booze being a punk on people's couch to like this massive band the song went number one in like 17 countries wow. and and it's just like i said so we're honoring him steel panther we're, we'll play 
And it's a sober night for a great cause. Right. And, and you walk out going, you don't have to be drunk to mm -hmm. have fun. And I want to give that. a shout out to Jenny Strait, who is a yes. friend of both of ours, and yep. Lynn Strait, who has passed away. Um, and um, just knowing that not everybody's recovering from just alcoholism. I've recovered from bulimia mm -hmm. and from you know, real kind of uh, codependency. And so I just want to say thank you for all of your work. Huge industry, big shout to everybody that is doing their part. Right. So important. And so la last thing I'd like to say is like, we have to understand that you're not different. I love you had a segment on that. Lo oftentimes, if it's gambling addiction, sex addiction, bulimia, it's really all a manifestation of the same thing. Mm -hmm. The solution is very much the same. It's finding that internal spiritual fulfillment and then we recover and get into the vortex of radness. The vortex of radness. That's right. I love, it. So I love you guys so much. You. Yeah. We'll see you on Saturday. We'll see you Where Saturday. Where can people get tickets or donate? Rock two, spelt out. Rock two recovery. Right? Can you see that? That's mm -hmm. right. Um, dot org. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. We're sold out. Amazing. Thanks, we'll be back with more. Good morning, Lala Land.